now recognizes Mr. Perry for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In, in keeping on the same line of questioning, um, Ambassador, I wasn't really thinking of it, but with Mr. Liu's questioning regarding assignment restrictions, and, and I think his assertion that we seek the best and brightest, and I think you agree with that, is there a potential, is there a potential that, that someone that came from another country wanted to work in the State Department at the highest levels, like probably most people in the State Department do aspire to, mm -hmm. um, could potentially jeopardize America's national security based on, on uh, uh, fractured allegiances? Is that a possibility? Mm -hmm. Sir, sadly, I have to say that we've had Americans from every background compromise national yeah, so, security. So it's, so, a, so it's a possibility. So, so there is a rationale for assignment restrictions is what I think you're saying. No, that's not what I said. Okay, so can you I'm clarify that? I said there is already a history of Americans from every background right. compromising. So right. I, it, what I would say about those who are either first generation Americans, second generation Americans, 10th generation Americans is the same. So there is a reason for assignment restrictions based on the fact that people may compromise themselves in allegiance to some other country. Yes. Yeah, I, I thought so. Ma'am, I'm looking at your quote here, mm -hmm. um, and I'm assuming it says, it says your name on it, Ambassador, so I'm assuming it's yours. And it, the, sec, the one in the middle there where it says primarily European American men this is who has the vast majority of senior positions. And then the last line is, that does not come about through merit. Is there any empirical data that you can provide to the committee um, that aligns with your assertion, that proves that assertion? Well, as you'll see from the quote, it's not a full quote. OK, so uh, that's, that's why I'm asking you to. does not come from merit alone. OK. okay. So, so do you have any empirical data to uh, buttress your assertion? Uh, just common sense and knowledge that women and minorities do not become less intelligent as we go up the ladder, that there are, in fact, challenges. But, it, but, but, you're, but the assessment mm. that you're making there mm. is primarily European-American men. That's, th that's what you said. But I'm stating a fact that the, most, the vast majority of senior positions are held by... But why is that? By but why? Is it because... So we, you're, it's because they're European American men. That's why, because that's what you said. I'm just trying to hook cause and effect. Yes, you're saying that the cause that is that merit alone okay. is not. Do you have again? That again, do you yeah. have any empirical data whatsoever to support that assertion? Uh, the surveys that we've done that lay out the challenges. No, no not, not surveys, ma'am. Numbers. Numbers that prove your point. You're very pleasant and you're very knowledgeable, but, yes. I, but that's a pretty stark statement there, which essentially advocates for discrimination of certain individuals based on their heritage. And I'm just asking, I don't think you believe in that. But you said that, so I'm asking if you have any factual basis to make that judgment. I don't think there's anything up there that says I intend to discriminate against anyone. But that's there's, what that that's what that says. That's that what I that intend says. to discriminate. That does not come about through merit. Will the that gentleman suspend for one brief moment? Suspend time. They accidentally reset the clock in the middle, so just so you know, your time will end at uh, when the clock hits two minutes. Just two minutes. Okay, be aware right. that the, All right. the clock got reset somehow. I was wondering about that, because yes. uh, 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 so. you know, I, I, I thought you were making up for the time that uh, the ranking member took time from me when he was the chairman. But I, I've let that go a long time ago. Gentlemen may resume. Apparently. All right, well, thank you. Ma'am, uh, I'm wondering about the standards. Like, I think you say that we want the best and the brightest, and I would agree with you. Mm -hmm. Um, last year, the State Department announced changes to the Foreign Service uh, standard, the test that that most, well, everybody took prior to that. No. No one took, okay, so can you elaborate, not everybody took that test? Absolutely not. As I said earlier, there are many within the Department of State who come through fellowships who do a lateral transfer into the Foreign Service who do not touch the Foreign Service in written exam. Okay, so fine. But for those who take the test, okay. for those who take the test, mm -hmm. Um, 
is there any way to take the test, fail the test, and, and still be uh, hired at the State Department once you fail the test? Uh, absolutely, and has been for a long time. Yes. It has been for a long time. Mm -hmm. So did this change to, to changes to the test seek to ameliorate that situation, to fix that? Um, for a detailed answer, I would ask you to ask uh, Global Talent Management, which led the changes and did the research about why it was uh, appropriate to change the weight that the test has in someone proceeding with the process of applying to the Department I, of State. I will yield, but I would just say that lowering the standard is not going to get us the best and brightest. And Mr. Chairman, I yield. I thank you.